So, uh, I don't know how much time we have, so... Uh, uh, half an hour. Half an hour? Cool. So, okay, I'll make All sure right. to squeeze everything in for half an hour. So, uh, how I do is this usually is my audience has zero English literacy, so I'm just going to report this. Zero, zero what now? English literacy. They don't speak English, so... Um, oh, okay. I'm just so, how, how are we going to handle this? What language do you speak? I, I speak English, uh, so we, we will do the interview in English, and then I'm going to add some Turkish subtitles to it. And oh, it's then, in Turkish. Okay, I got you. All right. So, Not a problem. Okay, cool. So, I just start recording. Uh, thanks, thanks for joining me today. This is such a pleasure and an honor for me because, I mean, uh, you're the reason I got into crypto, you know. Uh, back in 2013, <laughs> I, mean, I, I was doing my master's in the States and Bitcoin did like 10x uh, in, and shot up to $1,000. But I was super skeptic back then. Uh, I didn't go, you know, purchase any Bitcoins. But then in 2017, I recall listening to an interview of you on CNBC where you spoke about your mining company and you know, how you saw Bitcoin's future as a really bright opportunity. And then I, I just got into it. I mean, you, you, you convinced me to- Well, I hope you haven't lost too much. Uh, I, I mean, I lost some money, but uh, I'm, I'm doing good overall because I mean, uh, you know, losses also teaches you some hard lessons, you know, hard learned lessons. Yes. So. And then, well, the, the, the important thing is, is that uh, there are some seriously good uh, coins like Monero uh, and so on that um, will always have tremendous value, privacy coins, um, stable coins. Now, of course, they're not going to go up in value. That, there's nothing to invest in, but a place to keep your, your crypto without getting out of crypto uh, being safe. So anyway, uh, continue. Okay, so I just want to start with, I mean, how life is going for you? I mean, uh, how are you doing so lately? How's the president, presidential race going? Well, you know, I think life is uh, going fairly well, considering the world lockdown. Um, you know, it's not, not a lot of fun. It's very boring. Um, of course, you can adapt to anything. Uh, really, this much, I think we all have to work. I think the lockdown was ridiculous, uh, unnecessary. Um, I think countries like Japan and Sweden have proven that, uh, which did not lock down. Japan has the lowest infection rate and, and death rate on the planet. They never locked down. And they jam people into um, subway cars. I don't know if you've ever seen videos where the police are actually squeezing one more person. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, so you can't say, well, you know, social distancing. Well, you know, no way. So in any case, sorry. Uh, no, I mean, uh, th this is all great. Uh, I was actually going to ask, I mean, what, what is your take on what's happening with the world lately? Because I know that you have controversial thoughts on this COVID-19 outbreak. And a lot of people started to, you know, uh, back you up on your theories. I mean, like Elon Musk just stood out, you know, he tweeted, uh, you know. Yeah, right. It's, listen, it, it's common sense. All, it, it, all I have to do is wait. I know at first somebody said, you're crazy. I, I lost 20,000 followers in a week uh, just because I was telling what I believe to be true. But now uh, the world's turning around. Doctors are coming out and saying, wait a minute. This is no less deadly than the flu. Why are we in lockdown? Stanford University and Oxford University on two different continents did studies saying at least half of the population is infected already. So in which case, lockdown does nothing, do you understand? <laughs> so, so no, it's, it's nonsense and it's politically motivated and uh, the mainstream media uh, is the only beneficiary. And they're the ones who are hyping it, are they not? That, that, that's true. I mean, like, uh, I also felt like there, there's like a catch to this, you know, how the governments have been intervening with the outbreak and everything. I thought it was like an extension of the trade wars between US and China, but I don't know, maybe you have a- No, 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 it's not. It is not, trust me. It's, it's just nonsense is what it is. Yeah, I mean. Let's see how, how it ends up. And I mean, it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> so uh, as a follow-up, do you think this outbreak shit is gonna have any impact on crypto? Like, uh, or 
because you know the the it already the, has it already has i mean the 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 dip right right before lockdown the massive dip and bitcoin went down to what, almost three thousand dollars or something um uh, uh, and everything else always follows. This is the absurdity. We need to get out of lockstep with Bitcoin. <laughs> it's crazy. Every crypto is different. And yet Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes down, all crypto goes down. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin goes up, all crypto. Do you understand the insanity of that? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, of course it's had an impact. And I, I don't know what the future impact is going to be. The, the um, the current rise in, in uh, Bitcoin is due to the impending halving of Bitcoin, which people think is going to massively uh, increase the value of Bitcoin. Uh, I don't know, maybe, um, maybe not. We did, listen, I was, I was running uh, MGT, which was the, uh, we were the sixth largest Bitcoin miner in the world when the quartering happened. Um, everybody says it's going to go down. It didn't. It went up. So you don't know. Um, I don't know. Predicting is very difficult in, in uncertain times. That, yeah. Uh, but like, here's the thing with crypto. I mean, so much has changed over the past couple of years. But still, it's it's a very niche market. I mean, like only the uh, you know super interested early adopters are. Uh, you know, uh, investing in crypto. Uh, how does Bitcoin become powerful for the non-wealthy? Because I believe you also, you know, believe that Bitcoin is going to be something ma massively adopted. So, uh, I mean, how is going to? Well, I, th I think we need. To, I think we need to stop calling crypto Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was the first, yeah, and it's the largest by market volume, but it's certainly not the largest by usage. That would be Monero. Uh, Monero has a hundred times the users of Bitcoin, okay. uh, and yet just just a frat, of course, and just but nobody uses Bitcoin. Please, God, <laughs> all right. Um, the transaction times are slow. It's expensive. There's zero privacy. You can't put a smart contract on that blockchain, and you can't put a DAP, a distributed application, on it. Um, so no, you can't use Bitcoin really. Uh, everybody uses Monero or Ethereum to a certain degree. If you don't want privacy, Ethereum is the way to go. Um, but Monero is is the largest uh, use uh, use uh, um, uh, situation in all of crypto. Yeah, I mean, um, as it should be. It's 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 the first and still uh, the most solid of the privacy coins. Uh, I'm putting out my own privacy coin that will run on my own distributed exchange, the McAfee Dex. It's called Ghost. Uh, cool. It's equivalent. It's equivalent to Monero. It's certainly no no less secure and no more secure, true, I'll be frank with you. However, it's the only privacy coin that will run on a distributed exchange. Mm. Because here's the problem. What good is a privacy coin if you're running on a centralized exchange? At some point. <laughs> You have to get in or out. Uh, and uh, if you are on a centralized exchange, then you have had to give that exchange your name, documentation about the truth of who you are, your bank account in some cases. So you got no privacy at all on the exchange. And so if a government wants to come and say, hey, um, uh, who is this user using all the Bitcoins? Oh, well, that's John McAfee. Uh, where is he? Uh, let's see. Let me look at our record. So, yeah, he gave us his address, uh, 256 uh, State Drive in Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, what's his social security number? Uh, one second. Hang on. Send me a picture of his passport. Uh, yeah, I've got that. No. You have yeah. no privacy, even though you're using a privacy coin. Now, on a distributed exchange like the McAfee Dex, we don't ask for anything. Not your name. Not your IP address. Not your email. Nothing. We don't want to know about you. It's too much work for us. You just log in as an anonymous user and start trading. Now, the SEC has already come down on me uh, going, wait a minute, you have not implemented know your customer controls or uh, anti-money laundering controls. Uh, you're breaking the law. And by the way, it is not my job to play policeman for the United States. Exactly. Um, and if they say, um, well, 
take it down. I, went, I can't. It's it, it, it's impossible. It's a distributed exchange. Do you not understand? Decentralized and distributed. It's smart contracts on the blockchain. You can't ever change them. See, here's the thing. Governments do not understand that once you put something <laughs> on the blockchain, it is immutable, yep. unchangeable forever. So I chose to put our logic <laughs> on the blockchain in smart contracts. So it can't ever be changed, can't ever be stopped, can't ever be controlled. I'm sorry. I did it. I'm sorry. My apologies. Um, that's what you need, people. I mean, I, 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 I did this at great risk to myself, and I would not have done it had I not already been in hiding from the U.S. government. So what difference did it make? One more charge against me, more or less, is not going to make any difference. I can't go back to America. <laughs> I'll spend the rest of my life in prison. Um, so, you know, people go, oh, that was brave. Now I'm brave at all. It, it cost me nothing in terms of risk. Mm. I'm all, already underground and hiding with my wife. So, but yes, it was a gift to you guys, to the world. Um, and you, know, you, I, said, you told not. that it was like Pandora's box once this is open, no one can close it. So that's, that's pretty much You ain't closing this one. Uh, no. You put something on the blockchain in logic as a system, as an application, it can't be changed. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that is if you have uh, screwed up, <laughs> uh, then that screwed up logic is there forever. Uh, fortunately, we have not yet found any way in which we have screwed up. And I just, I've been programming since I was, uh, since the uh, late 1960s. One of the oldest uh, technologists uh, in this business. Wow. And uh, I promise you, I don't make many mistakes. So this one's working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're a pioneer in, in software security. So like, if you say- I am, I am, I, I invented it. Secured. I mean, I certainly, the very first antivirus software was mine. Mm -hmm. I invented anti-software scanning. And, and from uh, viruses came every threat to computer security. That was the beginning. Uh, the first artificial intelligence was the computer virus. Uh, it was a program that had uh, two things in mind. One, survival. And two, propagation. Well, fuck, that's a definition of life, is it not? An entity that uh, that works to survive and propagate, like us human beings, lions, bacteria. Um, so when that came out for the first time in 1987, I was flabbergasted. Two brothers in Pakistan, in Lahore, Pakistan, uh, that had a computer repair shop wrote <laughs> the world's first virus, and they called it the Pakistani brain virus they, they put that in the virus in in the program um again from that that crude beginnings uh because you ask when is ai coming it's been with us in the community the security world since 1987 because from those that crude program that had only one thing well three three things in mind survive propagate and destroy, <laughs> just like a virus, right? Just like a pathogenic virus. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, I had, no, I had no choice but to follow that, that path. I had no choice. I mean, I was a technologist. I had never seen anything in, in the world of computer science as sophisticated as the world's first computer virus. Two brothers in Pakistan with no formal training. Yeah. Wrote that motherfucker. All right. So <laughs> so anyway, that 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 got me started. Wow. That's that's actually a fascinating story. But I want to go back to the privacy coins because I'm also a huge fan of Monero. You said I mean Bitcoin was used for anonymous transactions, but actually it's not anonymous. It's anonymous. No, no. Listen, if you use Bitcoin, if I send you something in Bitcoin, then I know everything you did before, right? 
That's right. Then both you and I from forever after can, I can look in your wallet and see, Ooh, he's got a thousand dollars in. Who is that from? And I can get the, get the address that it came from. And if you pay $500 something, I can go say, Oh, you just paid five. Good God. If your bank did that, would you be a happy camper? Think about it. Yeah. If, uh, if you wrote the check for someone who repaired your house, like, uh, your toilets, <laughs> Uh, bad and you had a plumber um, and you wrote him a check for $50. He took it to the bank and said, hi, I've got a, a check from John McAfee. Um, would you tell me how much money he has, please? And I goes, oh, okay, one second. He has this much. Really? Well, can you tell me the last 10 checks that he wrote? Oh, sure. Would you be happy with your bank? <laughs> So how can you? How can people be happy with Bitcoin? That's it true. is not a possibility. All right. Here's the thing. I mean, like governments also understood this fact. They realized it, and so they're now, you know, forcing exchanges to delist, you know, uh, privacy coins like. Uh, yes. Yes. When do you take? Yes. That? Now. Like that's coins? why. That is why we have to have distributed decentralized exchanges yep. because where government comes to me and say do you listen something i'm sorry they listed themselves i had nothing to do with it by the way listing on the mac index is free you push a button on the home screen and you put in all the technical specs of your coin really and you're listed yes wow. we, don't, we don't charge anything good god man this is all free all right well we charge one quarter of one percent of taker fees, no maker fees, uh, and that one quarter of one percent was supposed to fund our development, which it's not, probably never will. Nevertheless, we're still doing it. That's all. There are no charges. You want a list? You want to cost the list on finance? <laughs> I mean, up, upwards of a hundred thousand dollars if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, so no, it doesn't cost anything on the maker index. Take a coin, list it. But we've already got thousands listed. Now, what we do is we, we display them <laughs> according to volume. So some some idiot makes their own coin, the Billy coin, uh, in Kansas City with no application. That's fine. We'll list it for you. If no one buys it, you're going to go on the bottom of the stack, and you're two thousand down, and no one will ever see it. All right. <laughs> so, so no, it's um. That's we have to have decentralized distributed exchanges, or we will die as a community because it is the centralized exchanges that are our weak point. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've got fantastic privacy coins, <laughs> but they're worthless on a centralized exchange. Yeah. If, in fact, you had to give your a full identification details to the decentralizing to the centralized exchange. You're just leaving a trail that way. It's just it's like against. Ah, yes. Yeah. So because uh, eventually, eventually, you're going to have to get out of um, Monero at some point because you can't buy everything with Monero, either into fiat currency or into a stable currency like DAI, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, and once that happens, you're screwed. If you have a centralized exchange. Now on, on a decentralized exchange, like me, it's, it's all completely, I'm not, hey, who just cashed that million dollars out of Monero into DAI? I'll go, fuck, I don't know. Nobody knows. I can't help you people. Do you understand? That's how it should be. I mean, that's how things are with cash. They can't trace cash, how much I possess in my house or like how much I boom. So the same thing should be in crypto. I, I'm also like with you in preserving that privacy in, in cryptocurrencies because like what, what good does it make have if we willingly, you know, uh, let the government actually spy on us, right? That Bitcoin yes. actually allows that. So all of, I mean, from all this, I feel like you have a, uh, you know, uh, 
changed view in Bitcoin. And most of my followers are actually want me to ask you about the 2021 uh, bet you took. I mean, uh, will the you 2021 what now? The bet you you had. In oh, OK, that's fine. Uh, we, we have time for one more question. We're almost okay. out of time. If you want to make it that one, I'll be happy to answer. <laughs> OK, so uh, will you be keeping your dick by the end of this year? Well, OK. All right. This is going to be difficult for your Turkish followers that may not understand the dry humor that we use in English. So now, I made that bet the same day that I predicted that whale fucking, I'm sorry to use that word, you can translate that appropriately, whale fucking would, oh, would surpass um, surfing as the world's number one water sport. Now, why did I do that? Because I had previously, made a post about whale fucking, which went viral. I don't know if you ever heard about that, okay. Um, I also, on that very same day, um, uh, predicted that um, uh, Donald Trump uh, would be caught uh, eating human brains. So it's jokes. So I have a joke day once a month, and that was my joke day. I also predicted that Bitcoin is going to hit a million dollars. Now please, if you work the numbers, people, if Bitcoin hit a million dollars, a million dollars times 21 million coins is a market cap greater than the gross national product of the entire continent of North America. Not a possibility by any stretch of the imagination. Plus, let's analyze it. It is for a coin that has no privacy, none cannot put a smart contract on that blockchain it is too ancient it is too it's an antique and you can't run distributed applications on it it has no value in truth it has none why did i post that because the day before all the bitcoin maximalists have said uh, there is nothing but bitcoin and i'm going oh yes it's going to hit a million dollars you understand in english that is a humorous thing well maybe and other languages, it is not. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, it was as funny as whale fucking becoming the number one uh, water sport in the world, okay? So I apologize for those people that could not get the joke. Uh, uh, listen, when I, when I was putting it out, I wanted to say, I was gonna say $100,000, and one of my advisors said, no, if you say 100,000, some idiot is going to believe it. I go, ah, fuck, you're right. So uh, I made it a million. And even at a million, people believed it. I'm sorry, I cannot help those people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. it makes sense that your joke was lost in translation because like in the Turkish media, everybody just took that very seriously. So I can uh, relate. To well, yeah, but, but again, yeah. I did it purposely right after. I mean, within minutes of tweeting that whale fucking will surpass surfing. I mean, surfing is a worldwide sport, right? On surfboards, will surpass surfing as the number one water sport. Please God, it's absurd. I don't think, nobody can fuck a whale. I mean, they're 70,000 pounds and 50 feet long. I mean, they can crush a ship with a single swipe of their tail. No one is ever going to fuck one. So that's a safe thing to say. No, everybody, everybody knows that was a joke. Uh, Bitcoin couldn't possibly reach a tenth of a million dollars because its, its market cap would be greater than any corporation in the fucking world. Greater than Microsoft, greater than, greater than Apple combined. Now, how is that possible? It's not. It's yeah. not. And yet people did believe it. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. What can I say? People not simply everybody. do yeah. not think. They don't think. Anyway, my friend, I have to run. Okay. okay. So thank you so much for having me on. Just uh, what, give me one altcoin that you're, is your favorite. That was also a question. Like, what, what, what coin is your favorite lately? So, <sighs> my the one I use the most is DAI. 
It's a stable coin, never has varied more than 1% from the US dollar. However, I'm going to have to change that soon because because of this lockdown and the two trillion dollars that the US government just printed out of thin air, yeah. the US dollar is absolutely going to collapse. So I've got to find something else. But there are stable coins for everything. They're based on whatever you want, gold, uh, the euro, you name it. So I'm going to dig around and find an alternative. But right now it's DAI, as I think everybody's. Uh, it has never varied more than 1% up or down from the value of the US dollar. Now, I think that's magic, is it not? Yep. Well, so anyway, that's my, fa that's my favorite. Now, you can't invest in it and make any money. But crypto is not here, people, to use as an investment. It is a golden key that you use to unlock your cage of financial slavery to the fiat currency of whatever country you are in. Not, but instead of using it for that, people are using it to scratch their asses with. For investing, oh, I'm gonna make money off of Monero. Well, maybe, maybe not. Why the fuck aren't you using it for something that can free you? Yeah. Use the coins, people. Don't invest in them, that's nonsense. So DAI, can't invest in it because it will never make you a dime, but it will certainly prevent you from having to get out of crypto into a fiat currency. Yep. Do you see the beauty of that? I All think right. that Thank was, you guys. Yeah, that was actually a great closing line. So thanks for doing this, John. It was really a pleasure. Are you very, and thank you very much for having me on. I'm sorry. I am sorry if I disillusioned you in any way, but no, no, no. You know, this, my, this, I am, I'm 74 and, and my, my only function is to tell life as I see it. So thank you very much. I will leave you now. Yep. Thank you, Bjorn. Have a great day. Vay be. Hızlı oldu. Yarım saat ayırmış eleman bana. Ee, o yüzden hepinizin istediği soruları soramadım. Ama inşallah hoşunuza gitmiştir. Ee, lütfen bu videoyu beğenin. Ee, bana destek olun. Ee, size hani John gibi diğer dünyadan kriptonun dua yerlerini bu kanala getirebileyim. Ee, öğrenmek istediklerinizi sorayım. Ee, bunların devamı gelsin. O yüzden bu videoyu beğenip yorum yaparak bana destek olursanız çok sevinirim. Ee, görüşmek üzere.